This is Stephen Codler, and you're listening to Your Superior Self. Hi, I'm Anita Morjani, and this is Your Superior Self. This is Christina Rasmussen, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, cultural creatives. I'm Bruce Lipton, and I'm here to join you with Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Paul Selig, and this is Your Superior Self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is Your Superior Self. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome back. I'm Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Welcome back. Thank you for downloading. If this is your first time listening, make sure to hit subscribe and leave a rating and a review. It helps me scale the show. It helps me get this out to those who may need it the most. And I am just fired up about today's guest, Kate Ekman, who um, I have had previous conversations with and I just am really excited about the the value that she brings to this episode, even the value that uh, is in her book, The Full Spirit Workout. Uh, I've read it. I've done a lot of the exercises in it, and I can say that she comes from a place of love, and she comes from a place of truly, um, truly trying to help society and be a teacher for those um, who may not know where to go, who may not know what's the next move, what's the next step, who's in a rut. And I just, her energy, and you'll feel it in the episode, the energy here is just one of, um, like she says, bringing the joy. She brings the joy wherever she goes. Um, and I'm just really excited to be able to present this to you guys and for you guys to listen. And honestly, um, it's it's been a mile marker for me as far as, doing the work and and where I'm at in my journey and the path and how we create and you know you you know how you get into these positions where you know you're doing the thing that fires fires you up but you don't really know what the next move is or what should be you know the result from all this hard work and it's it's basically you know and what she talks about is just having faith in the process and having faith in yourself and how you can create this 10-step system to shed light on your self-doubt which I struggle with a lot and strengthen your spiritual core and create a fun and fulfilling life and that and I want to emphasize fun because I don't have enough of that sometimes like I get too much into the grind and I get too much into the projects I get too much into research and I forget to have fun and just kind of let myself come up for air and enjoy this this moment enjoy this this experience that I'm having and I just, I'm so excited for you guys to listen. But before we get into it, here's a small clip of what's to come. She's like, you get judged a lot. And I just, you know, I'm laughing and, you know, like with you, I really connected with her and I'm trying not to laugh. And even after the interview, she's like, oh, sorry. I was, I felt like I was going to do a full on reading with you, but she's like, wow, you get judged a lot. And I'm like, yeah. Um, And I think for me, I don't want to judge back when I'm being judged, but even recently this woman, and it was a live TV interview and it's, you know, five, six minute segment. And I've got 45 seconds roughly to answer, but she just came at me and said, well, you're young and beautiful. You get whatever you want. And I just took a pause, a very short pause. Cause again, we're running out of time in live television. But the first thing I thought was I get everything I want. You know, the love of my life jumped off a bridge, but okay. And, you know, I just said to her, that's what we do, right? We judge people and, and think we know, we presume to know all about them based on what they look like. And, and also, you know, I'll let my mom and dad know that you approve of their genetics and, and thank you for the compliment. But I think we need to spend more time asking others and ourselves deeper, richer, more meaningful questions to really get to the heart of, of who we are and, and to listen to someone's story because someone could judge you. Oh, you look this certain way. Must be nice to be you. You have this whole life and not know that maybe you struggle daily with your identity or you're, you're in a world that maybe you're appreciative of it, but you think every day, I feel like I should be doing something else or something's missing here. And, um, I I think it's this whole like notion of judging and, and everybody being caught up in the comparison game, you know, with social media and stuff. I think we need to realize that we're doing this and, and, and really hold ourselves to a higher standard. And, and we're judging other people, quite frankly, because we're, we're judging ourselves. And so I think our, our time can be better spent cultivating inner characteristics like I've outlined in the book. Oh, all of that is just so true because how many times, and you know this, this has happened to you where you see someone and you look at them and you're sitting at your angle and you have these perceptions 
and someone you may know who you think has it all, who has everything going for them, commits suicide. And you think to yourself, how can someone of that caliber, someone with that work ethic, somebody who has all the things that I think someone needs to have in society to be successful, do such an act? And the truth is, you just don't know what battle they're fighting. You don't know what storm they're in. You can't judge someone just from where you're sitting because you have no insight on that person's reality of what they're perceiving, their subjective being. You don't know where they're coming from. And so you always want to take a step back and just kind of like you just remember that you don't have the entire story. You might have one page out of that person's book and you might think you understand it from that one page, but you totally don't. You don't know what they're coming from, where their background is, what they've dealt with, what, where they're going, what they're trying to do, their goals. And so you need to learn forgiveness and patience. And that is one of the biggest things that I've learned for myself is when people portray an action when they portray a attitude towards me and it's very hard I know but to take a step back and kind of breathe in the moment and be like I don't know where they're coming from I don't know this person I don't know what's going on in their life I don't know what's going on in their surroundings and I have to remember that I can't judge this person I cannot judge this act because I don't know what storm they're going through I don't know if they're in a storm I don't know what is going on with them. I don't know where they're coming from and what baggage they have. So I try not to judge, even though it's like a human condition that we always try to judge. Like we judge within the first 30 seconds of ever meeting anybody, but <clears throat> to realize that we're all a part of the same <laughs> journey and that we're just helping each other along. Like Ram Das says, we're just holding each other's hands, you know, taking, you know, guiding everyone home. And I hope this helps you in the long run where you can kind of see how we do this, where we think that people, we assume that people have it good because of the things that we see on social media and that, uh, you know, the stories that we tell one another when we're out, you know, walking and, and having conversations and being out in public. But in reality, we don't know where they're coming from and what's going on. And it could be just a, a, a persona, a mask that they're putting on just so that they can kind of, you know, get that justification for themselves, that, that hit of dopamine or um you know by telling us some type of story that we that they think will make us excited that they're doing the thing i don't know if that makes sense but um, always remember always reserve yourself um when you feel like you're in that judgment mode to kind of like realize and kind of come back to that that thought that you really truly don't know what's going on in their, in their life in their, in their in their lives and to reserve those judgments uh, and just kind of be like you know I, it looks great. They're, 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 they're seeming to hit that pillar of success. They're seeming to be topping that mountain. Good for them. And just kind of have that love, right? Just show them that love. And in the, in the reverse of that, you know, this person insulted me, this person is attacking me and kind of step back into it and be like, you know, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm just mis misinterpreting that. Maybe I'm just kind of not where I need to be so I can fully see the moment for what it is. And it could be a learning moment for you. Um, but take it, take this time to really practice patience and love and just kind of see that we're all in this t together and that we're just all working together to kind of learn from each other and what we want to put out into the world and what kind of energy we want to receive from the world. And, <clears throat> Um, just be connected with that energy and I'm sorry and I'm going on a rant right now but I just can't preach that enough because we, we struggle a lot with well-being and mental health and um, mental awareness in this in this time that we're living and I just think that it's such a, an important part of, an important piece of that well-being that we need to practice mindfulness and kind of just go within and just worry about what journey we're on and not really judge other people's um, uh, perception, you know, judge other people from our own perceptions, from our own angles, because we have no clue where they're at. And I promise you I'm done, <laughs> but go to tradedowns.com. Leave me a message. Let me know what your thoughts are on that topic. Cause I'm really interested in that. And then go to my YouTube channel, um, trade downs, uh, hit subscribe, leaving up some of the, the videos that I've been doing for that. And then after that, I want you to go to abandonedchildrensfund.org. Go over there, learn about what their mission is. They are helping abandoned children around the world in underprivileged countries to help 
uh, bring them in, give them love, give them clothes, give them education, give them that feeling of being a kid, just being a kid and being able to uh, be loved. Um, uh, that's my sacred activism. I'm trying to bring more awareness of that. So go to that website, abandonedchildrensfund.org and uh, spread awareness. So yeah. So with all that said, I just want to tell you that the universe created this moment for you and that you're supposed to be listening to this, to this right now. So pay attention. <laughs> Without further ado, here is the great and the powerful Kate Ekman. Hi, I'm Kate Ekman, and this is your superior self. Like a professional. Kate, how are you? Thank you for joining. What's going on? Oh, it's so good to be here with you. You know, your audience wasn't around on our first conversation where we got to connect, and I just felt like I was talking to a kindred spirit. So it's it's comforting. I guess I'll use that word. It's comforting to be back. Thank you so much for having me. It's my my joy to be here and, and share the space with you. Absolutely. It was a pretty powerful conversation. Pre-call. It was like supposed to be 30 minutes. It ended up like an hour and a half. I mean, what are you going to do? When you get in the same energy vibe as someone else who is right there with you, like you just can't stop it. It's, it's you know, it's good stuff. Um, so I definitely connect with you. Um what are you up to? What are you up? I know I just got your book. Thank you so much for sending this out. The, the full spirit workout, which is very vulnerable. It uh, talks about your story and we can hit on that if you want. Um, but I guess we can. Let's, let's start there. Like what sparked the book for you? Yeah. So I've been a journalist my whole career and I'm a very curious person. Always as a kid, I was always asking a lot of questions and I grew up in a household with Tom Brokaw on the TV every night. So I would listen to him deliver the news and then I would go and, and deliver the news to my stuffed animals. So it's interesting then that I became a TV news anchor and reporter and I love telling stories. And so I had written several articles for various publications, you know, even after I left my, my career as a TV news anchor and reporter. And at the time I was working as a TV presenter at QVC selling beauty products around the globe on television and, and working as a, as a, mo a professional model in New York city. And, and I had, hadn't written in a few years actually. And it felt good just to be, like you said, sharing vulnerable stories, talk about what was up for me. And the, the book was just kind of a natural next progression and next step. And it's so much bigger than me. And, and I, and that's why I did it. It really does feel like one of my greatest life assignments and a divine assignment that I got from Sam and Roth, who are my dear friends who I lost to suicide, both of them in one year. And it completely changed the whole trajectory of my life and made me not only deal with the grief of losing two of the most beautiful souls that ever lived, um, but also really looking at myself and the way I was choosing to live my life, who like most people, I'm going to call that out was, was getting all of their self-worth from the externals, you know, what we look like, how much money we make, how many shiny objects we're accumulating, what people think, how many people were impressing. And I just realized that lifestyle was quite simply unsustainable. And I, I knew my life depended on coming up with the keys for a better way of living. And, and that's why I went back to school. I went to Columbia and got my master's degree and in, in whole person coaching techniques and also studied neuroscience and positive psychology. And as an athlete knew how hard I had to train my physical muscles to compete at a high level for so long as a 17 year competitive swimmer, I knew there had to be a way to train my inner muscles and get really fit and strong and steady and confident on the inside and, and really be able to withstand any storm that came my way because Sadly, all of the chaos and nonsense and uncertainty in the world isn't going anywhere. So we really have to get fit on the inside. Mm. That's so powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it's pretty, that's, that's pretty amazing. I mean, to be able to, to do all that. I mean, you're a driven person. I mean, that, that, that's just, that, that is what it is. I mean, just talking to you, like, you know, we connect, we're both very competitive. We were, we're very outgoing. We very, we pursue what we want, our dreams. But the reason why, you know, and, and that we really connected. It was like, you know, you talked about like you, you're, um, uh, you have an intuitive ability. You, you, you have these psychic abilities to be able to connect to and people like myself who, you know, I might not have what you have, but I have a gift of tapping into my inner source and, and, and connecting with my higher being. And, you know, sometimes people like us need 
mile markers. Like we get, we get driven, we get into these flow states, we get on a mission and then the density of the world hit us in the face. And it's like, we, we keep, you know, tripping over our own feet and we need to talk to each other. Like we need to find each other. And I think that's why the universe brings people like yourself onto my show, into my life, on my journey. Right. Um, Cause you were like, you're like, Hey, if you ever need any need help, you know, reach out, like, you know, I'm right there with you. Right. Like, it's just, it's just, we need each other to keep pushing us because we have a bigger mission. We have a bigger purpose than, than just kind of like, you know, doing the traditional nine to five retiring and then kind of, you know, going to Florida during winter. Like that's, <laughs> it's not my plan, you know, like, it's just, I don't know. I like, I, I just, I, especially when you said you're intuitive, like I was like, really? Like, let's talk more about that. Like when, you know, you talked about the passing of a loved one, like, can you elaborate more on the gift and, and how that, what that looks like for you? Sure. I think especially when, when Sam crossed over and he was my, you know, second loved one to die by suicide in a year. And, and Sam was like my male counterpart, you know, we were the life of every party we're everyone's best friends. And I, I think when he crossed over, he gave me some gifts to be able to connect with him. And also I think to help me connect even deeper with other people and, and myself, quite frankly. And I, I, I got extra intuitive and I, I felt I would feel things. For example, I wouldn't think it, but I'd be like, Ooh, that person feels this way about me. And again, my, my, my conscious brain wouldn't think it. Cause I'm like, that's absurd, but I would feel it in my body. And I think at first, first of all, I feel like we all have this gift. Um, it's just, we aren't practiced at listening. Uh, it scares us. We push it away. We deny it, but it got to the point where it was so strong. I couldn't deny it. And I would just then allow myself to feel it and, and use it to my advantage. And sometimes it's painful when you're, you're getting this intuitive, intuitive hit that says, you know, this person who claims to be your friend or is a relative, they're like, wow, they're jealous of you, or they don't like you, or they're not supportive of you. And, and you, your conscious brain wants to push that away because you don't want that to be true. It's painful. It's upsetting. Or you get the hit that's like, I am not meant to be in this relationship and I need to end it. And you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to do that. That's going to upset so many people. That's going to hurt feelings, whatever it is, or the, the intuitive hit to move to a whole different state and, and really start fresh. So I think it's good to tune into this and just allow it to run through you and take in the information and, and use it to your advantage and to think, wow, how incredible that this power, this divine wisdom greater than me, you know, the wisdom that turns embryos into babies, acorns into oak trees. That's always at play behind the scenes, whether we choose to believe in it or not. I choose to believe and co-create with this power. Oh my gosh, why wouldn't we choose to do that and, and really just go with it? And so now I kind of lead by that. And I look at it as my special sauce, a way to connect deeply with people, especially like yourself who are open to it but also share this gift with others and say, Hmm, what I'm sensing or what I'm feeling or what I'm hearing is that, you know, and then blank and, and helping other people too. And whether it's teasing out their gifts or, or just offering them some guidance that they may not hear, feel, or understand on their own. Do you ever share this type of, do you share this information with your, your, your clients? Yes. And I, I don't, some are like, if you were a client, for example, I'd be like, Oh, what I'm hearing. And by hearing, I mean, my intuition, you know, or, um, and then some with some business clients, I, you have to be careful what kind of language you use. And I may not share that language, but I'll kind of hear the voice. I'll hear the intuition or divine wisdom, whatever we want to call it. And I'll just say, Hey, have you thought about blank, blank, blank. And 99.9% .9 of the time, the person will be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just said that. I was just thinking of that yesterday or I was putting this proposal together and that came to mind. And it's kind of like, of course it did. Or yeah, or then sometimes people are like, wow, I've never thought of that. That's genius. And just allowing them to run with it. I think I because it. say it or present it in a way that's not telling someone what to do, but more of just, just thought you'd like to know. Sure. <laughs> Well, I, the thing that you said to me, it was about like, uh, I think our first conversation, I wish I had recorded it because it was that powerful. Um, but it was like, you know, playing on a playground, like having fun, co-creating. Like I, I, I like to think about like life here as that, like being a child here on earth on this plane of reality and like being 
being able to play, like going and in, bringing into your reality of what you want to, what you want to manifest, right? Like uh, me, I, I want to go live on a private house on the beach and surf and go hang out, fish, do whatever I want, you know, do talks like this. I want to be able to podcast. I want to blow up the podcast. I want to be able to go around the world, spread more awareness. I want to, I want to play. It's not because I'm an ego thing. I have to be the best. It's like, I just want to go have fun. Like, I just want to, you know, come on, Kate, let's go to Paris and let's go have a conference about uh, intuition. Let's go talk about energy. Let's raise everybody up and then let's donate all that money to charity. You know, like that's what I'm talking about. You know, like, I just feel like that's why we're here. Do you believe the same thing? Cause I get like, you know, I talk to different people. This show is very about higher consciousness and sometimes it's spirituality. And some people are like, we're just here to, you know, correct our, our karma. But I'm like, yeah, but why can't we have fun? I love that you're using that word. It's my subtitle too. And I think that we forget that that's what we're here to do and that we've, we have somehow lost that along the way. I had a friend who's a psychologist asked me about a year or so ago, and we're, you know, two months into COVID. <laughs> he said, what are you doing for fun? And I had a really crappy answer and it took me a long time to come up with anything. And even if it was lockdown or even as that, I think we sometimes, I mean, even today I had a moment, I'm like, I've got three hours left more of work to do, but it was nice out. I just, I turned my computer off and I did, I met a friend and, and then I went to Pilates and just made myself do something besides the grind or what I'm quote unquote supposed to do. And I think, you know, we're all on this mission um, of, of needing and wanting more. And it's this insatiable hunger that we have because we're plugged into societal standards. We often don't even believe in. And it's that whole notion of you need all of this stuff to be worthy of anything. And when we're in that place, we can never have enough or be enough. And so when we are plugged into our intuition, into into the model of having fun and serving others and, and social connection, I mean, even research, all, all of the research on the planet says that's what's going to increase your well being, you know, having time, having fun, acts of kindness and service, social connection that moves the needle. But like the house, the car, all that stuff, it may be nice. We all like it. I'm not saying I don't like nice stuff. I do, but it actually doesn't move the needle on our well being or happiness. And so I think even our first conversation, we didn't make a penny off of it. We, you know, there was nothing in, of material gain from it, but we both felt so lit up because it was a genuine social connection. We were talking about ideas greater than ourself and, and, and really just plugged into a thought system of, of love, of connection, of fun. And I think that you feel playful and youthful. I mean, when we're children, we're way more connected to source than as adults, because you know, we go about the world and we're told all these things and we get our heart broken or we face rejection and we get further and further away from source. We're kids. They're just so playful and happy and, and having fun. And, and very kids are so intuitive. Yeah, no, they are. I mean, I, um, I, I don't want to lose that. I did lose that. I did lose that. And I want to get it back. So it's like me fighting for that back. Right. And, and um, I just, like I said, I want to have fun. I want to go out and, you know, I just want to have fun like a kid, like a, for my birthday, I just got a long board and, and get back into skateboarding and hanging out like, and just, you know, I don't want to be the, Oh man, I, this is what I wanted to say, you know, and add on to that. So I, after we got back from the keys, I went and took the kids. I, f I was feeling guilty because, you know, we were hanging out our, by ourselves and having fun. And then, so I got back and I was like, you know what? I want to do something nice for the kids. So I, I take them to the skate land place that we go, we rarely go to. And it was like free skate. And I see this 70 year old man just skating, having fun, dancing. Like he's like, you know, doing the old seventies type of like skating, but dancing to like newer hip hop. Like I was like, that's it. That's it. This dude's got to figure it out. You know, it's just, it's about having fun and, and connecting with that. And then, you know, everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. And we've kind of lost our way in terms of that. Um, because it's counterintuitive right? and it's, it's like the opposite of the thinking of the world that says you got to grind you got to hustle what you see all those hashtags on social media no days off and yeah. the hustle and the grind and I think oh god that sounds awful just like make it happen grab the bull by the horns and I just think that sounds scary and a bit suicidal <laughs> right so like <laughs> 
know, let, let's well, come up with something a little more beneficial to our Yeah, world. right. Like, I mean, I I, I was watching, I, I can't remember what I was watching this morning, but it was something like maybe Mayweather had something like, I don't know, it just it, work, 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 you know, so many hours in a day, work, work, work. I'm just like, all right, whatever. Like, you know, I, you know, just to be honest with you, like what I really want to do is just be like being able to, to be the guy 38 years old, turn his life around as far as not like, you know, I'm not in a gutter or anything, but it's nothing, it's nothing wrong with that. If you are, I'm just saying, I want to be the guy that people can look at as, a, as an example and say the trade downs, you know, he, he, he broke out of that mechanism of society. He, he broke out of that, that machine. And he was able to have fun and, and recreate a reality that consciously you know because like you know subconsciously unconsciously i've created this reality for myself up to this point and this show is three years in the making and so like i'm altering my reality now but i want to get it to where i can be on a bigger stage i i I can i can manifest things i can bring things in my reality i can be a part of that uh, percent that um people call lucky and be like and then come back and turn around and be like it's not luck guys it's not it is me consciously choosing this life. And and I'm here and I'm here to tell you, I'm here. I'm a, I'm an example. Like there's, I'm blue collar. Like I am, I am no different than you, no different than you. It's just, that I broke out of a mechanism. This is where I'm at. This is my playbook. Have it. I don't care. Have fun. Come on, let's go. Yeah. And being the face of it and showing people, what's possible and that it wasn't necessarily easy for you. There was some struggle and that like, Oh, but I'm supposed to be doing this, but this isn't fulfilling. And, and that's, that's the thing. We all hear the call. That's why just even this book, we all hear the call. It's just that some people don't answer. And for me, I had to answer this call. It was a promise I made to these two men and, and to everyone who struggles with mental health, which turns out is everyone. And I think when we, we dare to put ourselves out there and risk and really you know, be practiced at listening to even hearing the call and then answering it, the universe supports us. And and we are given the guidance and support and we meet the people who help us along our journey. There's that Martin Luther King Jr. quote that says on your journey, mighty companions will join you and just be willing to put yourself out there. And for you, just mold a different path and show people what's possible. And, And you don't even have to say anything. You can just lead by example, or they think, wow, because of him, I know that I can do it too. Like you said, blue collar and you're living this life that society says you should live. And not only that you should live, but you should be happy living this life. And I think a lot of people are sitting around thinking I've done all the things. Um, I have all the shiny objects. Is is this as good as it gets? And, And that's why some people, even the clients I work with extremely wealthy and successful in the material world, but are still lacking in the fulfillment. And they think, shouldn't my life have more meaning than this? And so that's why it is so important to go on that inner journey and and really get to the core of who you are and what you really want, not what you want. What you want is often dictated by society, what your parents think you should be doing, what Sally and Johnny are doing next door, what your friends are doing. I'm talking about what you really want when you go underneath your titles and labels and, and, and what you're supposed to be doing. I put that in quotes. Well, where do you want to be? Like, I've talked a lot about mine, like what I want to do. Like, what is it that Kate Ekman wants to do? I'm doing it. It's, it's writing the books. It's putting myself out there for me. So many people I see, I see, you know, I have to get past this too. books or vanity projects, or it's another thing of, especially when you're all the people like, I'm a best-selling author. And, and it's just, I think when we stay true to the work, you know, I even think of, I I talk a lot about the five P's of confidence in my work. And and my second one is patience. And the story I use to illustrate patience is from 20 years ago at the Grammys, country singer Shelby Lynn won best new artist. And she was very gracious, but also a little sassy when she accepted her reward. (laughs) She said, best new artist. It's only taken me 13 years and six albums to get here. The only speech I've ever remembered, I almost fell off the couch because you think, wow, yeah, I hadn't even heard of her. She must've just started music last year. Meanwhile, she's been at this for so long. And the next thing she said was, you know, for me, it's always been all about the music. And so maybe that didn't get her the Grammy on album one or two, because she wasn't half naked in her flashy outfit and and, and playing that role that so many artists play. And and I, I get it, no judgment there, but I think that was also a, for her a testament to 
it's taken me a little longer because I'm I'm here only for the music and not all the hoopla. Sure. But eventually she got there and she got the award, which she probably didn't even care about. But I, I think it's a testament to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And, and for me, um, the journey hasn't necessarily been easy, but it's been fulfilling and that I, I've kept going even when it was hard or I wanted to throw in the towel. And that's because I had, I had a very strong why, you know, my guys kept me going. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's tough though. Right. Like you, like you're talking about, like with everything, a book is very personal, especially this book, because it's, it, it is a, you know, you talk about a couple of examples, like I said, I'm only a quarter way in, but I mean, right, right out of the gate, we're talking about some pretty important issues with mental wellness, you know, well being. And you, you, you show, you know, you show up for that and you, and you are, you're sharing your story and, and thank you for that. Like, that's very brave of you. Um, and what I hear is there's no ego in this. Like, that's what I hear from you. There is no ego. This is just a total mission of bringing awareness to the masses. And I think you're doing that, but I think that there's a larger larger scale of that right like not because of ego but because of the need of this right like the need that people need to hear your story and and see who you are and then hear about spirituality that like we talked about that too in the first first conversation was like people don't expect the things that we're talking about like when when they have a conversation with us they see kate ekman they're like she's talking about intuition like what like trey downs is talking about channeling or higher source like what is that and just spark that interest, that curiosity to investigate. I'm telling you right now, like this conversation, you know, people write this down on, uh, what is it? June 17th, 2021. And then in five years, 10 years from now, where Trey Downs and Kate Ekman are going to be, we're going to be on a, a platform somewhere and we're going to look back and say, you know what? We called it, we called our shot. Like we're going to be doing something totally, totally, totally bigger than what we are now. Not because of ego, but because of the need that this world has. Thank you so much for all of that. And, you know, as you're talking to, because well, I'll let you share your own stories with it, but <laughs> I have to get judged. And, and I think, especially as women and I'm a, people can't see me. I'm a, you know, white blonde woman. And um, I get judged a lot. And I, I even was on a show recently with, with a psychic and she, she said, she's like, you get judged a lot. And I just, you know, I'm laughing and, you know, like with you, I really connected with her and I'm trying not to laugh. And even after the interview, she's like, oh, sorry. I was, I felt like I was going to do a full on reading with you, but she's like, wow, you get judged a lot. And I'm like, yeah. Um, and I think for me, I don't want to judge back when I'm being judged, but even recently this woman, and it was a live TV interview and it's, you know, five, six minute segment. And I've got 45 seconds roughly to answer, but she just came at me and said, well, you're young and beautiful. You get whatever you want. And I just took a pause, a very short pause. Cause again, we're running out of time in live television. But the first thing I thought was I get everything I want. You know, the love of my life jumped off a bridge, but okay. And, you know, I just said to her, that's what we do, right? We judge people and, and think we know, we presume to know all about them based on what they look like. And, and also, you know, I'll let my mom and dad know that you approve of their genetics and, and thank you for the compliment. But I think we need to spend more time asking others and ourselves deeper, richer, more meaningful questions to really get to the heart of, of who we are and, and to listen to someone's story because someone could judge you. Oh, you look this certain way. It must be nice to be you. You have this whole life and not know that maybe you struggle daily with your identity or you're, you're in a world that maybe you're appreciative of it, but you think every day, I feel like I should be doing something else or something's missing here. And um, I, I think it's th this whole like notion of judging and, and everybody being caught up in the comparison game, you know, with social media and stuff. I think we need to realize that we're doing this and, and, and really hold ourselves to a higher standard. And, and we're judging other people, quite frankly, because we're, we're judging ourselves. And so I think our, our time can be better spent cultivating inner characteristics, like I've outlined in the book and tapping into your own intuition and, or whatever your gifts is and following those gifts and, and asking a higher power, you know, what do you think I should be doing? How can I serve rather than spending our time you know, wallowing in self-pity or coddling our own weaknesses or neuroses and judging and comparing to others. I, I just, you know, 
as I like to say, it's not midnight yet, but it's, it's 1145. Like let's go, let's identify and start leveraging our unique gifts and strengths and, and being a part of the upliftment of the world rather than being caught up in all this nonsense. Right. Yeah, no, I, you're right. A hundred percent. Cause like my dreams and aspirations are separate from everything. Like, I mean, I, I you, people get caught up in the game, you know, the, the Instagram game, the Facebook game. I, I can barely go on Facebook anymore. I, the reason why I like Instagram so much is that I can, I can post pictures and I don't have to say too much. Right. Like I don't people to crack, you know, crack me up with, you know, I don't, I don't I'm not gonna get into that, but it's just like, it's just ego. It's just that uh, hate that need for confirmation that you're doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing again that's the mechanism that society has built it's the mechanism that you know is just uh we, we cling to and, and we're just a cog in that and you can't hate the machine like you can't be mad at it because it's a machine it's a software but you can break out of it like and through through meditation <clears throat> through asking that higher source of maybe your curiosity is like all right well maybe i can do it can i do i have gifts like that people automatically write it off as i don't have those type of gifts how do you know if you never experienced it how do you know if you never really went out and looked for it you know i think that i have something that is close to channeling but not like um you know like paul said like how he channels the the the, the, the higher source comes through that through him it's more so like i hear something and it feels right um and then like my intuition, like I can just, I, I can, I can feel things. Like I go out and running in the woods and I can feel like the energy from that. And it's like, it just feels so good. Like it just, it's a lot better than hitting a like button. You know, like it's so much better than receiving likes on a post. It's, it's deeper than that. It's like, it's like an, like an important part of like the universe, the cosmos. It's like, this is you, you know, have you forgotten kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And that's when you're in that space, you're kind of in alignment with your inner perfection that, you know, as I like to say, our, our spirit can't be rejected or overlooked or criticized. It is that, that, that pure source. And I think that's what you're experiencing when you're taking a walk in nature or when you're sitting quietly in a room alone. That's why I love that quote by Blaise Pascal that says all of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone which is why I've implemented this mandatory, which I invite everyone to do five minutes a day. I do more like an hour, either all at once or broken up, but to sit and stare and sit, stare out the window, stay, stare straight ahead, check in with yourself like you were a small child and ask, how are you doing? What do you need right now? What's working? And if you're feeling extra bold and brave, you know, tell yourself, I'm so proud of you. You handled that really upsetting email with so much dignity and class and grace, or, you know, well done. You didn't tell that person off when you were really triggered. You, you knew that that would probably damage the, the relationship forever. And you, you took that pause and you were non-reactive. And, and that's what my, you know, this full spirit workout is about. It is about that non-reactivity and stillness and, and take a pause before you react or even overreact. And, you know, I think the more time we spend in that place, then you don't have to work so hard, you, right? Instead of like the 12 hour days of the grind, you're like, I didn't get enough done. It's you spend that time listening to the higher power and getting connected with source. I do, you know, quadruple the amount of work in a fraction of the time because I've allowed myself that break. I've allowed myself to tune in and then I'm just in the flow or you talk about channeling and that's like this book. I wrote this book, 90,000 words in, in four months. And I, part of me is, I was about to just say, I don't even know how I did it. I mean, yes, I'm very disciplined um, and I'm a writer, but so much of it, it just, it just flowed out because I allowed it. And I gave myself the space and turned off all the distractions and was just so connected. And it was, it was a co-creation where it's like, what do you, what do you want me to tell people? And, and what should I say? And even near the end of the book where I had that moment of like, oh my gosh, I've said everything I need to say. I've got like a chapter and a half left to do. And I sat in meditation and I flat out asked, what should I write about today? And I got, you know, I got the subheader like, oh, that's kind of quite brilliant and sat down at my computer and just 5,000 words came out. And of course it all gets edited and cleaned up later. But I say this not like, oh, I'm so special. I say everybody has this. It's just, we aren't practiced at listening. We have forgotten how powerful we are. And we don't think that we can do the thing that we want to do. We've been convinced because we've gone and collected evidence for why it's not possible and have held on to the limiting beliefs or, or, or the criticism rather than collecting the compliments, 
realizing we're powerful and then going about our lives, collecting evidence for that. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes total sense. I love all of that. Um, what do you think? Like, if you like, I, I, <sighs> what do you think that the audience needs to hear right now? Like if you're tapping into that intuition, you're, ta- you're tapping into that higher source, which I know you can, like, what do they need to hear right now? Well, I'm getting, I just tapped in and, and I'm even exhausted right now. So I feel like I'm not as connected. So I'm even like, Oh, please give me something. But I just, I got fear and I've even seen the word fear in all caps. So I'm, I'm feeling and experiencing some fear from whoever's listening to this right now. And I, I get it. I've certainly been there. And I think the way to overcome fear or th- the lack of confidence or, well, it's easy for that person, or I can't do it because of this is just to show up and do the thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't know how to do it all right now, but, but have faith lean into and, and build up that trust muscle. And, you know, I'm even feeling and hearing the imposter syndrome right now, like, well, who am I to do this? Or, and, and I just say, show up and do it because then, you know, you look at the imposter and say, who do you, who do, to what, who do I think I am to do this? It's like, well, I just did it. Or you can't do that. Well, I just did it. So I think that time where we can just show up and do it, even if it's not our best product, like I said, you can write and edit and clean it up later or, you know, show up at dance class and, and maybe you suck. But as I like to say, dare to suck. And just put yourself out there and ask, did I do my best? Did I have fun? Like we've been talking about and then your success and start redefining success for yourself. But even a woman I I, I saw tonight at at Pilates, you know, she said, you know, that's so great. You wrote a book. I really want to write. And everyone gives you every excuse in the book, right? For whatever the reason is they haven't done it. Mm. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm hearing a lot of excuses. And I, sometimes I feel called to gently call them out, but as I like to say to people when they're like, I don't have time or whatever I say, is it that you don't have time or is this not a priority? And I think the more we can just be honest with ourselves, because quite frankly, if you really wanted to do whatever you want to do, you'd be doing it. So then you just got to come clean with yourself. Maybe I don't really want to do this, or this is society's goal for me. Or if you really want to do it like you, I do see you breaking out and and doing, and I told you, I'm like, I see you on this big stage. I see you leading these things and speaking. And then, so maybe you just start on, maybe you go to a stage, rent a stage close to your house and maybe nobody's there, but you get on the big stage and you just do it. So you get that muscle memory. So when it is time for your opportunity, you're ready to go. Oh, I'm going to rock out when that opportunity presents itself. I do a lot of visualization. Yes. A lot of that, a lot of visualization. I, I, I believe that, um, you know, that helps me to prepare. I mean, there's studies out there that are crazy studies where, people are like visualizing themselves working out and they get in like their muscles are getting stronger. They haven't even lifted a, a, a pound at all physically, but mentally they've done all this work and their bodies are showing stress of actually lifting weight. It's incredible. So you can't tell me that visualization the other way, as far as like getting up on stage and seeing yourself give a speech or a talk or whatever. I've, I've, I've done this thousands of times where I'm on the treadmill or I'm out running and I, and I, a song comes on. And like my, my sacred activism, you know, Andrew Harvey talks about sacred activism. I, I love it because it's like, what is, what is the thing that makes you, your heart break that you want to go out and fix in this world? You know, mine is children suffering, abandoned children in underprivileged countries. And I want to give them a home. I want to give them education. I want to give them a, a place of love. And I'm going to do that. Like I'm going to do something in that. And I've envisioned myself receiving some type of humanitarian award and giving the speech. And then immediately, as soon as I get it, I find a, chi- a, a child in, this, in the audience and I hand it directly to them because it's not about me. It's about them. It's about love. It's about giving. It's about being less of an ego and more of a heart. You know, like, I mean, I don't know if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. That's why I always say, you know, we're, we're in our head. And when, I be, and when I talk about becoming practiced at listening, I'm not talking about to the ego who says, you're not good enough. You messed up. You can't do it. I'm talking about that divine wisdom. It is like a a computer file that you can download at any time. And then you move it from that, that, that divine intelligence into your body, into your heart. That's where it becomes wisdom. That's like the wisdom where we can drive a car. We don't have to think about it. It's wisdom in the body. We've done it so many times. You don't have to think about it. And then you move that wisdom from your body down into your hands and you implement it. That's the practice. That's the showing up when you don't feel like it. That's the showing up 
even when you don't think you're, you're the best or great enough yet. And just, and doing it for the love and the joy of it and, and for a higher purpose. And I, I think anyone who's listening that thinks, Oh, I can't, for what I can't do it for whatever reason, get really clear on your why you have a strong why that'll keep you going. And the days you can't do it for yourself, you do it for your family. You do it for a cause or an organization greater than yourself. And that keeps you going. And that's the win. And, and that's your why. And it, it's not enough that just we achieve our goals. That's why so many people, multimillionaires, billionaires, they don't feel the fulfillment. It's just, it's just all about them, but you want to see everyone around you do well. And you, and you do something that uplifts others. I mean, look, you, you you give the message and then you're like, oh, and now I'm going to donate the money to charity. So it's a win, win, win. And I think the more pure that our intentions can be, the better. But I, I think that's that's the the thing that's not happening. It's because everyone's plugged into society that's like, it's about the money, it's about the fame, it's about impressing people. It gets me the more likes. And and you bring up Instagram. And for me, it's just like, you know, I have to make myself post because it's it's part of the business. And but I only post when I have something that's going to benefit someone else. That's why I like to post original quotes and writing, but I do find when I'm in a place where I am now, where I'm like, I don't need the validation. There's no like, Hey, look at me. Um, then it's kind of like, well, why am I here? You know, I can go, I can log on and, you know, support you or whomever is I'm following who's posting something. But I feel like when you're so immersed in in the work behind the scenes, it's kind of hard to get on social media (laughs) because you're, you know, you're just, you're so immersed in, in your passion project. Yeah. Well, the only reason why I have to post is because of the podcast. Like I, I wouldn't even really post. I'd be like, you know, incognito almost. Like I would be, I, I'm serious. Like I, My I don't care. Is- like I just don't care about, cause a lot of it's just, it's fake. It's fa- fallacy. Like a lot of the, the, like, you know, the coaches and stuff like that. Like, you know, the, the thing that scares me though, really is like, you know, and it's a good point because like, you know, I've done a, a little bit of research on like positive psychology and the statistics that are out for that. You know, once some of these coaches get a hold of that data, they're going to run with it, you know, and really, you know, you don't really need a lot of training to be a, a positive psychologist. You need to know the statistics and the science behind it. But like, you know, anybody can find the data and say, all right, well, you know, thinking positive, t- you know, positive thoughts, this is what's going to happen to you. So like now they're just taking the data and they're running with it. Same thing with spirituality. What scares me is that they're, and it's going to happen is that people are going to, you know, and it's happened throughout history is, you know, people are going to take it and abuse it, but it's like what you really, and, and, and people are going to like, that's why I don't believe that stuff. That's why I don't believe what you're saying about intuition and spirituality. It's all about what resonates with you, what really fires up that heart. And you can tell the message and you can feel the message if it's off. Like if it's all about them a little bit, like there are channelers where if you look and I've done it for myself, I'm not going to name names, but if you look at the very beginning of their career, they're talking about being one with God and they're talking about us being that a part of that source. They say it makes you uncomfortable. They say you are God. Now I get the message. Like we are a part of that. So technically are we God? If you want to put it that way, fine, whatever. But I, I find it more comfortable if I say I'm a co-creator with that source that I am from that source. So I have that ability. And then if you look at their career later and later and later in life, you see now they start getting a little bit more, they start channeling things that don't make sense to me. How do you go from that? And you start talking about politics like that doesn't, you know what I mean? So there are things that there are people out there that abuse their powers but you have to look at the message. You have to listen to the message. If it's about love, it's a, if it's about connection, if it's about the whole world rising together and it fires you up inside right here in your heart, why does it, why does it need to make sense? Why does it need to be you know, analyzed? You know, it's about that, that vibration, that energy that is put out there, that collective vibration, that collective energy that's going to help everyone rise up and, and feel better. You know, it's, it's the conversation that I'm having with you, Kate, like it's, I was on fire for three days after that conversation, because it was like, you put me back on, on that path. You were my mile, my mile marker. You know, I, I get discouraged quite a bit because of the density that we live in and the people that are like, you know, uh, what do you, you should just be happy for what you're doing. You know, you should be, you know, why are you not happy doing what you're doing? Like you, you, you know, you have a tremendous life. I do have a tremendous life. I have, I'm very grateful for the life that I have, but I know that we are made for so much more. 
Like I know it, not because of an ego thing that I want more. It's that I want to prove it to myself that I am here and I'm a part of something that's higher and that is greater, that is so much more of love and that I can recreate and change things if I want and then show people that I'm going to do this and then do it and then be that example for them. Yeah, and I think, I think what happened that day is I was just a mirror and I was showing you and reminding you of your truth and the truth of who you are. And that's why it's so important to surround ourselves with people who see us and hear us and acknowledge us, not just for some role that we play in their life, not just what's convenient or what they want, but who really see us. And I just, I saw you so clearly, not because I'd known you through, I mean, we had just met and I'm like, oh, I see you. Oh, I know who you are. And, And let me share with you. And you were like, whoa. Um, because you know, if you watch those reality shows, it's like, Oh, I'm going to read that woman. And it's always negative and the hatred, but I felt like I'm going to read you and, and tell you the truth. And it was about kindness and love. And for me, I feel like, you know, I have so many job titles and, you know, I, I'm on shows like yours and people read off the, you know, the education and the experience and the titles. And I think, okay, great. And I'm proud of where I've been and what I've done. But when people are like, well, what's your job title? How do you introduce yourself? And I'm like, I'm a joy bringer. I bring the joy. I'm Kate and I bring the joy. <laughs> and you know what I mean? And there's, I, it's not from some school and it's not this credential. And I feel, and, and I'm like the truth teller. And I think because when I tell the truth, you're inspired to tell the truth. And when I'm just real and raw and vulnerable and, and don't pretend to have it all together, then it's like, oh, I guess it's safe for me to be that too. Even if it's just with me at that moment, but hopefully, you know, you carry on. But for me, I feel like it's my duty to not just do that for myself, but to do that for everyone that I interact with and be like, Oh, I'll, I'll be like, Oh, are, are you an actress? You should be an, you should be acting. And the person's like, Oh my gosh, I just, I just started taking classes. You know, I'm really a secretary, but you know, and so I think it's just, that's why I love my gift of intuition and like practicing because I'll meet someone like you. And I'm like, Oh, and I think even with you, I'm like, I think I even said to you, and you're probably like, what is she talking about? I'm like, oh, and your book's really great too. And you're like, I haven't written a book, but I'm like, okay, well, you will. I mean, I could just see it and feel it. And it doesn't even matter where you were in the journey. I'm like, oh yes, you're going to write a book. And then I saw you doing this and you're like, okay, cool. Thanks. And thank you for being open because not everybody is. Um, but also when you were talking and, and you, you talked about God and, um, <laughs> You know, unfortunately, especially in our country, I think a lot of people have made money their God, have made fame their God. So I think that's where you were seeing and feeling the disconnect is that, you know, and God is a very loaded word for some people. I mean, God to me is unconditional love, but um, you have to be careful because I think people have made a lot of um, other things God for them. And that's why you probably feel the ickiness or like you said, you can go to someone's Instagram feed. And they say they're this, that, and the other, but if you, I like to get people practice at tuning in when you tune into their Instagram page and their energy, you're like, there is a disconnect here. And I think that's great information because you're like, everyone says I should hire this person as my coach or my marketing person. But when you tune in, you're getting this thing where I'm like, this isn't adding up and you should listen to that. Um, I think we, again, we hear these things all the time, but you're like, oh, that's not nice. Or no, everyone says this person is great. But to, again, become more practiced at listening to that voice and yeah, listening to your intuition, um, everything that I've read and I've read, I'm not tooting a horn or whatever. I've read a lot of books and not just because of, you know, to read books. I read them because I'm curious and I'm, you know, just excited about where I'm going to, where I'm going to find the next nugget. And a lot of the, the messages are the same. Know yourself, know thyself right? The oldest saying ever, you know, Shakespeare said it, um, the Oracle of Delphi, or however you want to say that, said it, know thyself. And everything else is kind of like, keep going. Everything, everything's saying that. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, you know, people are like, you know, you can't just keep going. It doesn't make sense, you know, but if you're doing the thing that it is yours, like, what if you keep going and you don't stop? Like, if you just keep going, like, just don't stop. See if you can get to the end, you know, instead of turning around. Like in, in bringing that to reality, whatever it may be, whether it's actress, but maybe, you, you know, you talk about being an actress, like what if it's, you know, I want to be a big time actress. If you continue to pursue it, 
Like, who are you to say that it couldn't happen? But if you stop doing it, it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's not. And the analytical analytical mind is like, you know, yeah, yeah you got to do X, Y, and Z. You got to have this, this, and that. But there's so many instances in my life where I don't, I don't even know how I got to where I'm, you know, where I was in my journey where something popped up and I'm like, holy crap, you know, this is something that I was thinking about. Now it's here, you know, like, um, it, it's just, I, it's call it a law of attraction, whatever you want to call it, but it's like the universe is going to help you. Like you got to continue to just keep pushing and keep going. And that is a belief for me right now, but I, I have a feeling that it's going to be a known for me. You know, like I have a feeling that I'm going to, I'm not going to just believe that anymore. Like it's going to be a known for me and I'm going, and that's the biggest thing too. Like I want to be somebody that, that knows. And then when you can, and then when I go and talk to people about it, they're going to be like, they're going to have that, uh, you know, that, that, I don't want to say credential, but it's like, you know, you have that, that uh, they're going to believe me a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to know it. I'm going to, I'm going to say it. I, I want to, I want to speak the truth. And that's what I want to know. Like, I want to, I want to know God one. I want to know that source, that higher source that, you know, experience that. And then two, I want to be a co-creator with that and then create the reality that I want and be conscious of it when I do it and then pass the word to everyone else. And, and you'll do it. Cause I think you have that conviction. We've talked a bit about Instagram tonight. I mean, it, it's, it's not enough just to post the quote on Instagram, right? We have to actually believe the things that we are saying and posting. That's where I see a big disconnect. People say something and I think they think they believe it, but then you look at their actions and it, it doesn't match up. So for me, confidence isn't just, you know, I wrote this in the book. It isn't just knowing that you deserve the best. It's making conscious, deliberate, intentional choices that reflect that. <laughs> and same with posting it. It's just, and that again comes to, to doing the work and maybe spend a little less time on Instagram, for instance, and be behind the scenes, you know, practicing these things and becoming more practiced at listening and doing the work that people aren't seeing yet and, and really becoming the person who can attract the experiences and opportunities and relationships and have the confidence where that's just who you are rather than what you're striving for and trying to control and manipulate. You just are that person. And, and I think that's why you kind of have that, you know, there's been some inner struggle, but also that inner calm and confidence, because I think when you just spend that time on your own, it, it is so clear. And you're like, Oh, I am this person and I am going to do these things. And then you get the, you know, inspired action and intuition that says, call this person or, Hey, you're feeling stuck. Why don't you reach out to Kate and ask her like, what's up and, and just have a, a real conversation with her and just be candid and forthright about what's really going on with you. Not, you know, we all are, we, we, we present one, a pretty presentation package to the world. And there's also that person behind the scenes, just trying to keep it all together. And I think the more that we can just own him or her and, and, how relatable and authentic and, and fun and sexy that person is, I think the better. He or she is good enough. We, we love that person. And um, yeah, wow. and you, you know, you say keep going and it's something that, you know, I love Kobe Bryant and his, his book, Mama Mentality is, is sitting behind me. And that's something I always hear Kobe saying is, you know, just keep going. And, um, you know, that doesn't mean you're just blindly walking along and it's like, oh, this sucks. It's, it's that intentional, right? Like yeah. what does it mean to keep going? For me, it means to become better and um, ask for help. I think that's the thing on our journey too. We need to start taking better care of ourselves and each other and, and start reaching out for help and, and, and offering support to others as well. Yeah. Keep going. I mean, you said that to me a couple of times. Um, you know, and then the analytical mind says, you know, why, why, you know, like, why, what is it? You're here. And then you just kind of got to trust that gut instinct. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta trust what it is that's pushing you that passion, that drive, that, that force. Oh man, I could talk to you all night. Um, what am I here? Maybe you have that moment where you're like, why, what's the point? And tuning in and asking, what am I here to do? What do you want me to do? And then listen, you got to listen for the answer. And you might hear something and say, oh, I don't like that. Or no, give me another answer. I think that's the other thing. I think some of us are practiced at listening. We just don't like what, what we're hearing. <laughs> you know? well, do like, you ever hear people say, like, do you ever hear like source say it's just not that time for that person? Like, or do you hear like, it's just not in the cards? 
Yes. And something I hear a lot too, when it's like, what should I do about blank? You know, especially me, I always want to be 10 steps ahead of where I am and I will get the message, do nothing, which you talk about counterintuitive and it's like, no, but I'm trying to, you know, get this thing or move this along. Do not, you've done enough. That's like, you're done. Like, and that's when I will be like, all right, I'm going to turn the computer off. I'm going to go like, see a friend. I'm going to go have some fun. I'm going to go exercise. I'm going to turn it all off. I mean, I get the message, do nothing. That's enough. Even a, another thing I've been struggling with is that notion of what is enough. You know what I mean? And so I, I had a moment yesterday again, I was in tune and it was that, that moment of I'm really tired. I think I'm done. And then the ego mind saying, you should, you could, you got another two hours. I think you should, you should push and do another two hours of work. And it was that moment of, I heard this is enough. Let this be enough. And so it was that practice in this is enough. Yes. You can push and extend and stress. Why that's about, that's about impressing or trying to prove something. I don't have anything to prove. I don't have anything to prove, shut it down, go do something else. And then I did, I gave myself that break. And then the next morning I, I, I showed up at my office with more gusto and it's because I gave myself that break. And it's just, I, I am, I am constantly um, fighting against that whole notion of what is enough. And, and that's a product of, of being in this culture. We, we, it's, it is that whole thing. We, we, are, we are constantly being bombarded with messages and imaging telling us you're not enough for so many reasons. That's why even the billionaires are like, oh, I guess I need another billion. And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like what, what it's, I don't know. It's just, I, for me, the driver is just, it's not that, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I, I mean, you get it, right? Like, it's not some. I hope, I hope people are getting it. That it's not like ego for me. That it's not like you know, it's not something that I need to like. Joe Rogan is like a hero of mine, but it's not like I don't need to have him on my show to be a success. I need to have, I need to have conversations like his, you know. And, and I guess I want to have conversations like him. And when I get to that point. You know what I mean? Whatever the universe brings me, the universe brings me, but it's not like, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like, I feel like my mission here is to like, be that example, like I said, and I feel like it. Right. And, and to know for myself, know thyself that this is what I'm here to do. I don't know if it makes sense. I just hope that people walk away with that. Like they, they don't want to be, Oh, well, Trey is just another guy that wants to to, to have a million dollars. It's not that it's like, not even about the money. It's not, it's not even, you know, if that's what it, you know, that thing comes to me, then yeah, I'm going to use it for, for something that I want to create that I want to go have fun with, but it's not necessarily the thing that I want. You know, I want the ability to have conversations with spiritual activists. Um, you know, Oprah, I want to have, um, I have a whole list of people that I want to have a conversation with. But I want to be like, you know, write it down. And then, like I said, you know, 15, 20 years from now, I'll be like, everything on that list is complete because I consciously made it complete. Yeah. I think what, well, what I feel from you and I hope your listeners and audience feel from you is you are a man who has heard the call and, and you're exploring that and what that means, not just for yourself, but, but for the collective and how you can best make this come about. And, and what I like is that you don't have so many definites on it. You have goals, but it's more of just, I'm willing to show up. This is what I see myself doing and just taking the next action step. But also, you know, I'm not there when you're spending your time alone and getting more practice at listening and then making the conscious decisions from that. But also I think teaming up with people, you know, you've got a lot of great people that you've attracted onto your show. And, and, and really, I think every time you have one of these conversations, you're just uplifting not just yourself but everyone who's listening higher and higher and giving people more options and more possibilities that we don't have to stay stuck in what society says we should be doing whatever the heck that means and really allowing all of ourselves to be the multi-dimensional beings that we are to step out of these boxes that everyone tries to put us in and, and quite simply I feel like it's a message of freedom and, and being who you are and being free to do what you really want to do because I think what we all really want to do is be in a place of, of genuine influence and power and, 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 and energizing and uplifting others. Um, that's what we really want to do. I think when it is something with like 
intentions that aren't pure, it's because we've simply forgotten who we are and we've fallen asleep to that. And we're plugged into, to society that, um, can take you, it can take you a bad way. That, that, that's why I'm so, I'm so, I think passionate about this because I lost two men who were doing all the things that society said to do and were the cream of the crop and so beloved and they chose to end their lives. And, and that terrifies me because they did all the quote unquote right things and chose to not be here. Um, that scares me. And it's now the, the leading cause of death. It is such an epidemic that no one wants to talk about. So I do worry about people, not that everyone's going to choose to end their life, but really not even live at all. You could be living, but like be dead on the inside. So I just, I want to talk about these things because I want people to know that they have options and that the resources are available to you for free. They're within you. You just need to, to access them and, and start to learn more. And you can reach out to me. I'm sure you're happy with people reaching out to you. We're happy to answer questions and, and help people because, um, this notion that we need all these things to do this is, is really a myth. It, it, it is within us. Nobody wants to hear that because it does sound cliche and almost too simple, but you know, that's, that's the reality. Mm. It's also in your book. Again, the full spirit workout, which I love a lot of interactive work in here. Um, I could talk to you all night, Kate, like seriously, <laughs> I, know. I mean, this could be a four hour podcast. Um, <laughs> but I know that you're tired. Um, <clears throat> you've been up, uh, you've been up hustling all day. How can people connect with you? So I'm at Kate Ekman TV, K A T E E C K M A N dot TV, like the tube that you watch. And you can go to the full spirit workout.com for all the information on the book. I give you links where to buy it in stores online. And I'd love to connect with you. You know, I'm about the, the collaboration, the genuine connection and not, not dealing with all the, the competition and fear. So it is a fun, interactive, safe place. And all the meditations in the book are on my website for free. Uh, my sound engineer mixed them at a high frequency. So you can take yourself on a journey and really, you know, maybe it's your first time, maybe your, your years into this journey um, with yourself, but really just, I invite you to take it and, and to, and to be open. It may be uncomfortable or scary at times, but the results are so worth it. And, and let's have some fun with it. Right. It, it's, it's time. Let, let, let's go. You know, it's time. Um, <laughs> last question, Kate, what do you want your legacy to be? Wow. What a question. What do, I'm just going to say what came through is I want to be remembered as a good person and that everyone who I came into contact with, you know, breathed a little easier, felt a little better, laughed and smiled a bit harder. And I just really want everyone to feel truly seen and heard and feel acknowledged in my presence and know that they are powerful. And, and after even just a moment with me, they think, wow, I really can do that thing. And thank you, Kate, you know, um, because of you, I, I just, I feel a bit better and more comfortable and at peace with it myself. Well, let me be, let me be the first. Thank you, Kate, for making me feel comfortable about being myself. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I just already consider you a friend, giving you a big energetic hug. And I, I, I see you, my friend. I just, I'm, I'm so excited for you. I see really big things for you. I don't even want to put any label on it or because for, for me, I'm just, you know, for people who can't see me just making this big expansive motion with my hands where, you know, sky's the limit. And I'm just excited to see where we both go and, and I'll see you on a stage somewhere, somewhere cool and somewhere soon. So I look yeah, forward to Yeah, buddy. <laughs>